Let's get bitter, baby. Welcome to Intoxicated Masculinity. If it's Wednesday, we have a cocktail video coming to you. Today, we are going to continue with our bitter month. Uh, we are getting ready to get rid of the summer, and I know most people hate me to say this, but good riddance. I don't like the summer. Um, today, we are going to start a two-part video uh, where we are going to talk about the Boulevardier. So the Boulevardier, this is the three-year anniversary of me doing the cocktail first, uh, a cocktail which is a big favorite of mine. Uh, I don't know, have you had the Boulevardier before? Uh, yeah, I believe you made it for me once. Uh, it's a nice bitter cocktail, uh, but it's got the bourbon in there to make it sweet. Uh, and then obviously you have sweet vermouth, bringing sweetness too, but it's just a really well-balanced cocktail. Um, but I got to thinking that uh, it is made with Campari, but should it always be made with Campari? Uh, so I got a uh, rather sizable selection of uh, bitter Amari, which is the uh, plural of Amaro. Uh, and we are going to taste through all these Amaros this week. And we are going to pick out the two that we like the best. And then next week, we are going to make ourselves three Boulevardiers. One of them, the traditional way with Campari. And the other two with the other two bitter liqueurs that we have picked. Um, so we are going to taste a lot of very bitter things. Thankfully, we are both very, very deeply bitter people. Yeah, and I think, that's, I think that helps us out, you know, psychologically. Um, now, some of these, uh, I believe, I will be able to taste pretty... Like, we're going we're to include Fernet Branca in this. Um, I'm pretty sure I can spot Fernet Branca from six blocks away. Uh, some of these are going to be much more difficult to spot. So we are going to blind these, just a single blind, um, and we are going to do what we can uh, to, to try and take what we know about these previously and just taste the cocktails. We will be tasting quite a few. Uh, I believe I have 16 on deck, so yay. Um, and we're not going to be doing in-depth tasting notes for every single one of these because I want to be able to walk tomorrow. Right. Uh, we will be tasting all of them. What do you think? I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Campari wins, just in that, you know, a lot of times bartenders have made this drink over and over and over. So I imagine there has been some testing and it makes sense that Campari is, would be the best. But maybe, you know... Once you learn a thing, maybe you never try a new thing. So it's worth a shot. And maybe we'll be surprised. And in that vein, when, when we did the uh, uh, coffee liqueurs, um, I don't think uh, Kahlua is my favorite coffee liqueur, but I'll tell you what, making a, a espresso martini with Kahlua, it works. <laughs> it just really works. Um, and so it's not wrong. And I think that's, that's the, could be the case here, but we might come upon something interesting. So. We are going to set up some things to drink. We are going to drink them and tell you if we like them or not. So. I mean, it's bitter. I'm gonna like it anyway, but. He won't be able to smell them, but he will be able to taste them. That's true. Okay, we're back and we have our first set of four. Yes, that's right, our first set of four. Um, and I think we're just gonna jump right into it. So this right. is going to be number one. And you will below see which ones we are we are drinking and salud, or nosdrovia. Right. I'm not gonna smell it. That's low on bitterness. That, that is not super bitter. It is pretty good. It's pretty good. I'd say it's, yeah, more sweet than bitter. I eat like cherry. Like I taste like cherries. There's definitely a sugary feel to that, especially in that opening. It's, it's sweet. It is uh, sweet. It kind of, you know, I like sweet is kind of cloying. In the, yeah. 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 Um, that's why, uh, you know, we're not talking about rums today, but, it, you know, I'm always talking about rums. Um, some rums they can actually add sweetness to, and so if you taste a rum, I'm talking about use the combo, um, they will add a bunch of sugar to it, and you have a rum that you taste, and it tastes very sweet. That's where people get this impression that all rums are really sweet because they're made from uh, sugar cane. Just because something is made from sugar cane does not mean it's going to be sweet, especially after it is distilled. So not wanting to have like huge discussions over every single one, but since bourbon has kind of a sweetness to it, my first guess is this one is not going to be better than Campari. You're not going to want to overload on the sweetness on it. Yeah, and uh, I mean, again, with, with a Boulevardier, it depends on what you're going to use. Because um, the, the problem, the one problem with a Boulevardier uh, is there is no bourbon that is going to stand up to Campari. Campari is just much stronger. <laughs> right. it, will, it will defeat the bourbon every single time. Uh, now, I do feel the bourbon stands up better than gin does in a Negroni. Um, 
just because the bourbon is bringing that kind of nice sweetness to it. But anyway, shall we move on? Sure. Again, very low bitterness. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Less bitter sweet than the other one, but still very low-key bitterness. On I that. like this better than the other one. Yeah, this by, is by better. Fair it doesn't have that Kool-Aid taste to it. It's got a more natural flavor to it, I think. Yeah, the first one was very sweet. So, for me, with my lowered ability to taste subtle flavors, I don't detect bitterness on that at all, and maybe that's the way to go. I had a, a Negroni not long at a local establishment not long ago, and it had almost no bitterness in it at all. And now it makes me think maybe they didn't put Campari in it. Maybe they put whatever well, this Well, to is. be fair, there is a lot of bars where they know that they... Most people don't like bitter. Yeah. And so a lot of bars, they will cut your Campari. And some of them will actually switch it up for Aperol. Well, that's what made me wonder. That might, that might be Aperol. That might be Aperol. For, for those that don't know, Aperol is a much less bitter, uh, sweeter, and again, it's not the same. They've got different botanicals. Uh, the making of Amari is very, very complicated. They, they include a lot of different things that they to get those flavor profiles. But just for, for the layman, uh, the Aperol is sort of like Campari light. It is less bitter. It is a little more sweet. Um, it is a little more herbal. Um, but it does have, like this, you get the bitterness kind of right in the back of your throat, and it is quite light. It isn't at all bad taste. No, no, I think that was pretty good actually. Oh, there it is. There's mint in there. That one was better at the end. I still wouldn't say incredibly better. No, but I mean, compared to the other two. Mint. You know, I don't think I would have detected it until you said it, but now it's all I can... Yeah, It's the definitely... high note on the aftertaste. There's definitely mint in there. It's got kind of a... peanut buttery feel to it, too. I think that is a little sweeter than the second one. It's not cloyingly sweet like the first no. one was. But yeah, definitely. All right, we're gonna do, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick one from each, and then I think we might come back and, and kind of pick one from those last four. We'll kind of see how we feel. Um, uh, so let's, we'll taste this one and we'll decide which one of these four we like the best. And I think we're gonna try to come to terms because uh, one of the last times we did this, uh, we had Kale in and we both picked different things. And I kind of like if we were picking the same thing just so we kind of maintain consistency. I don't think that's gonna be a big, I don't think any of these, except for the first one, I don't think the first two we hated. No. Um, I, think, I think I like both of those. Uh, and we'll, we'll pick out one we like the best. So. This is, uh, there's less going on here, I feel. There's quite a bit of aftertaste, though. It hangs around. I'm trying to figure out what that is. It's not very bitter. It's not very bitter at all. Um, it's good, though. It's not bad. I like the overall taste. It's got kind of a, like syrup, like a, like a maple syrup. Yeah, although that's not, for me, it would be a positive tasting note of this one. Um, yeah, as in tomorrow, it's probably not what you want, but. Yeah, I don't think I want that anywhere near my Boulevardier. I don't think it's bad. Um, it's definitely, like, I think that the first one was the worst. And it's not terrible. It's, it is a little cloyingly sweet. I um, think that last one is the one you would give to somebody who just wanted like a shot of Amaro. Yeah, this is pretty palatable just all on its own. Uh, for me, it's definitely between the middle two. Uh, I don't know, what's your first thought? <laughs> I think your number three is probably the where you're at, is that? Yeah, but does that mean it's number three is the one that I like the most, but does that mean that's the one I want to try in a Boulevard game? I mean, again, having a different flavor profile, it's gonna, anything we put in there is gonna have a different flavor profile. Well, true. I would just focus on, if you like number three the best, I'm perfectly fine going with that one. Yeah, that's right. Is there a pick from this one? Yeah, I think that that was probably the best of this one. Uh, the, number two was pretty good too. Um, well, you know, you were saying that the, uh, 
no uh, bourbon can overpower the Campari. The bourbon might have a chance on that second. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I think that's that's definitely true. Um, all right, so we are going with uh, number three, and we are jotting that down in our imaginary little booklet. Um, and that is our, our pick for the first one, so now we're gonna move on to our second panel. Okay, we're back and we're at round two. Um, so one of these, uh, and again, like I said, we are, we are blinding these, we're not double blinding these. I only got one Amaro that's green, so I know which one that is. <laughs> um, so I just full disclosure, um, I, thought about, I thought about trying to go and pick up some colored glasses, um, so it might make stuff like this easier, but I mean, it's a tasting. It's not, it's not the end of the world. This looks like it's going to turn me into the Joker. It is green. What is it? It is... It is... It is green. Star Trek reference. All right, first up. Based on the color, I think I know what this is. We will see. Oh, I definitely know what this is. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Malort. How are you today? That is really low-key. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's low-key. So, the thing, with, the thing that's weird about the bitterness on Malort, which I think that is, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know, but I'm just guessing based on the flavor profile and the color. Um, is the bitterness on Malort is all at the back of your throat. It, it, there is almost no, in, or very little initial palate. It is all back here. Um, I, when I did the Malort margarita, we talked about that. Um, I know it's been a little while ago, but you remember these things. Um, it is, it is certainly bitter. It's got a... You ever had one of those like lemon drop hard candies? It's got kind of like a lemon drop, like when you're sucking on it right then, it's got that kind of. Yeah, I can kind of get that, like a little bit of. To it. There's like a little bit of syrupiness to it, just yeah. a little bit. Um, I don't know if this will be my number one for this round. I suspect it could not be. <laughs> um, I still don't hate Malort. I really don't. I, I think yeah, that, I think a lot of the people, and again, I'm assuming this is Malort. I don't know that. From what I have heard about Malort and seen the faces on videos of people who try it, I keep expecting this overpoweringly bad, and it's not that. It's, again, like I said, it is the vast majority of that Malort is all in the back of your throat. It is that back of your throat, bitterness, asbestos kind of a feeling. But, as Scotty and Data, Data said, it is green, and we will drink it. pretty nice. Um, so the bitterness, I think, is dialed into just the right degree. It is bitter. It is not overpoweringly bitter, but it is solidly bitter. Um, the front end... So one of the things they will teach you if you ever take a culinary course is you eat with your eyes. Like The way something looks affects the way it tastes in your mouth. Um, I taste key lime. Like a little bit of key lime in there, and I'm not sure if it's just because I'm looking at a green thing. My first thought was that kind of looks NyQuil green, but um, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it too, but no, unlike that first, it isn't granular, it's it's a little bit of sweetness, a little uh, Jolly Rancher maybe. Again, not like, not, not like something that you actively have in your mouth, but that when it's done, that little little Maybe, maybe a little sour apple almost. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind that at all. I kind of like that, actually. All right, shall we? Oh. It's kind of bourbony colored. That has a weird... Oh, that's even kind of bourbony in itself. A little hot. It's spicy. Yeah. That is, sp that is really spicy. It's like, um... Cinnamon and pepper. So what's funny about this is I didn't put it in the roundup. There is a um, um, There is a liqueur that is made with tequila and peppers That's not in this lineup, so that's not this but this does taste like that a little bit 
Um, except instead of like hot pepper, it's more like like black pepper, but like yeah, but like quite a bit of black pepper. Yeah, right. Like yeah, very peppery, very black peppery. Like it, we had to we had to put ours into a special shaker because the thing it came in just doused everything we would try and put on. That's what it tastes like. Yeah, that is that is tons and tons of black pepper. While this is a very strong taste, I'm not sure, mixed with bourbon, I'm not sure I could tell you which was which. I'm not sure I could tell a difference in taste. Well, so, bourbon I probably could. Uh, rye, I mean, one of the one of the primary taste notes of rye is black right. pepper. A lot of pepper. Um, or even uh, high rye bourbons is black pepper, so. That could mix in well, or they could kind of drown each other out. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Well, I would that think is a, that, that is a very, pretty well. That is a very strong flavor, though. Yeah. Like this one, some of these other movies taste people are like, oh, it's a little subtle. This one is not subtle. <laughs> no. That is not subtle at all. Um, that is right in your face and just black pepper and and hot too. I feel like this is a little higher proof. Although I wouldn't say that it, it's very much a high peppery taste, but I wouldn't say it was like the highest bitter taste. No. That's what that's what's kind of strange about it. So no, it's not the most bitter thing we've had. Um, but I feel like the spiciness, it's almost like it, it makes it taste more bitter than it really does to some degree. Yeah. Um, that's a really interesting one. I'm going to be interested to see which one that is. That was number three. Right? That was number three. Uh, shall we move on to number four? Sure. Thank you, sir. This one is oh, very I I, light. I think I know what this almost one is. Almost clear on this one. Wow, it goes really subtle at first, and then you kind of get that peppery again. Not like the third one, but there's some this peppery is, there. Yeah, so this is a very, very slow but steady escalation of bitterness as it moves to the back of your palate. Mm -hmm. um, the Malord is different. So Malord, it just kind of isn't there, and then it just kind of appears at the back of your throat. This is moving. So it starts off, there's a little bitterness on the front of your palate, and as it moves back, it picks up more bitterness. It's got this almost weird hollow space, like in the back of your throat, like... I think that's like what I'm just... sitting there like a square. I think we're describing the same thing in different terms. Yeah. It's, it comes back there, it, but it is there. It is there. Um, that's the most bitter of these four. I yes. think. I don't think it's really even close. Yeah, I think it's fair. Um, so number one is out of the ranking for me. Um, that as far as these these four, uh, again I, again I'm pretty sure it's more. I'm not gonna bet money on it, but I, I think it is. Um, I kind of like aspects of all three of those. Um, well, see, this is again where I was wondering about the last time, because I liked too. I liked the green. Do I want it in a bowl of RDA? It's not gonna compete with any of the other flavors. I mean, you could. Uh, I mean, you could pick a green Negroni, which that would be something that'd be kind of interesting. Um, uh, I, although I don't know if, you, if with the sweet vermouth, I'm not sure the green is going to color through, or if the sweet vermouth is just going to kind of turn it all a uh, yeah, similar color. It all dark. Um, although you could use, you could actually use a, uh, a blanco vermouth. That would be interesting. Sorry, just refer, talking to myself now. Uh, I don't know. What, what is your first recommendation? Wh which one of these three do you think you? Because you, you agree on the first one. <sighs> this is kind of. Less I wouldn't that. say that's bad, but yeah, I don't think it's the one right. I want in the cocktail. Um, honestly, I think I'm going to go with four. I like the taste of two. Again, that's something I would probably sip. Here's the only thing about four that I'm a little nervous about. And again, this is all, you know, because I'm not, I'm not going to make 16 Boulevardiers. <laughs> so we have to cut this back a little bit. Um, that has a lot in common with Campari. Um... I think it's a little bit less bitter than Campari is. Um, it's less... It's sweet at the opening, but less sweet than Campari, I think. Yeah, th yeah, I think I agree with that. Um, I'm kind of interested in this one. I might just do something with this on my own. Uh, we, we might just do a green Negroni as a cocktail and, and try that out and see what we can do. I think, I think it probably... Yeah. If you want to go with four, I'll go with four. I think that's... I think three's real interesting. With that, I think that three is really nuts. good. I just don't know that you'd be able to tell the difference between if you made a drink with bourbon and you made and mixed it with rye. I don't know that you could tell the difference. Yeah. 
we might we might just set these two back in the background and, and play with those on another day. But yeah, I'm I'm happy going with four. I think four is, is gonna be it's just fine with this one. So that puts us halfway <laughs> through our uh, through our tasting, and we are gonna move on to our panel number three. All right, we are back with our third panel, and we are back with our first and our third. Let's dive right in. Metaphorically, not literally. I'm not sure if that would be a great thing to dive into. I really like the taste of this one. I know what this one is. <laughs> um, so uh, we, we reached out to this one uh, in, a, in a video a few months ago. Um, little sweet, little hot. A little bit, yeah. It's it's bit the bitterness. This so I think there there's multiple different kinds of bitters flavors that you sort of run into. There is bitters that are kind of around the palate. This is I think one of those bitters that's kind of around the palate, right on the outside of the palate. Uh, the one we picked last time, the number four, that one is a it starts off a little bitter and then kind of moves back into big bitter. Yeah. Um, if you have Campari, it's just bitter everywhere. <laughs> everywhere in your entire palate is just bitter. Um, this is again, it's 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 a little bit sweet on the on the initial palate yeah, in the beginning, and then it's sour, or, and then it, then it's bitter around the outsides. But the sweet carries the bitter to all the parts of the mouth, I think. But without the cloyingness of that very first one, it's it's. I like that. Those are really good. All that being said, I don't actually love that one. <laughs> uh, moving on. It's red. I might know what this one is. Shh. That one actually reminds me of Campari. Ooh, that's big bitter. That this may be the most bitter one we've tasted so far. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's big bitter. There's not a lot of subtle flavor too. Again, I don't detect subtle real well, but um, I'm getting like a little bit of fruit, like a little bit of like maybe cherry. Yeah. Um, but it in is in the aftertaste. But it's also not. I don't know. I, I feel like I don't have the right words to discuss and to describe bitter flavors like I should. Um, that is. So if you if you go to like your Malords, that is a very uh, kind of I don't know back of the throat. Loogie bitter, for lack of a better term. Um, I'll bet there's some sort of continuum. I'm absolutely sure there is, and I'm absolutely sure I don't know what <laughs> it is. Um, we'll have a flavor master on at some point and tell us, but yeah, that's good. Again, I'm getting cherry on the front, and then on the back, just a lot of bitter. Just a lot of bitter throughout. It's like they combined like a cherry and one of those Red Hots. Not Red Hots exactly. Because that's more spicy. This isn't... This isn't spicy. Yeah. What's those cherry ones that are like gummies or something like that? Not gummies, like a gumball. I'm not sure. That, that's a, I like that. I like that. That's it's very very bitter in a, in a good way, uh, and a little bit of sweetness too. Yeah, that was good. It, that that one. If I didn't think Campari was in it, I would think that was the Campari. It's not the same. As, Campari is drier. That's a little bit sweeter than Campari. Um, at least I think, anyway. Um, anyway. Kind of an interesting nose to it. Wow, that's warm. Um, okay, I need to, uh, we're gonna do more about bitters in the future and I'm gonna do more research just to try to come up with the terminology. This is like, a little bit musty, which sounds kind of bad, but it's not unpleasantly so. Um, and like, God, I can't believe, it's, it's quite bitter. This would be fairly high on the bitter scale compared yeah. to what we've had. It's a lot closer to that, that second one. But when you said warm, I was kind of thinking, um, oh, what's the hot, like the hot toddy, you know, kind of like a well, a actually, you said, type of thing. You said red hots. I get a little bit of red hots on this one. Um, yeah. Maybe a little bit of like, like a little bit of mint. There's like a, there's like a little bit of sharpness to it. 
I did not detect mint on this one, like the last one you were saying. That one I could definitely tell in the aftertaste. This one, it, I didn't think it had a whole lot of aftertaste, really. Oh, I get quite a bit. I get quite, that, that's pretty... Maybe I didn't get enough of a glass of water on that one, but... I like that one a lot, too. I think that one's pretty good. Not much sweetness on that one. Mm -mm. All right, number four. That one's weird. That one is a little... So, one of the problems we're going to have, and I kind of knew we'd have this, and I'm kind of surprised we didn't have it more up until now. These two are very, very bitter and very strong. And so... I'm getting very little on this one. I don't think it's bad, but I think it's uh, it's kind of being a little, it's one of those problems when you're doing tastings like this. There are certain things and like if I had known what each one of the flavor profiles, you know, each one of these had, I would have probably scheduled them in a certain order so one didn't overpower the other, but I just, I don't and I can't. Um, I'm not much of a fan of this one. <clears throat> um, I think it's it's not it's not bitter. I mean, I mean, it's not it's not that it's not bitter. It has very low bitterness compared to what we've tasted before. Um, you know the I trough it, in a roller coaster, like you have the fun part going down, and you hit that edge, and then you're starting to climb back up again. It's that well. It's that bottom part. Of I uh, no, I th I like this. I think it's good. I, I don't think it's amazing, um, but I think it's. It's not what I picture in a Boulevardier. Uh, so I think I would not be, I think, going crazy if I say it's between two and three. Yeah, I think that's fair. I would say three. I really liked two. Um, so on a personal preference, like just something to drink, I think I would probably go with two. Um, I don't know. I thought three was... Three, three's pretty powerful. Sorry, just going back. Yeah, especially going back to them. Three is just such a big flavor. It is. Um, um, in the interest of keeping it all unanimous, I can go through. I did. I did like three quite a bit. Yeah, uh, and I like two too. I, I didn't like. In fact, I even like. I like the other ones. Um, but I don't know. I'm. That seems like really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I will say so far, four is the only one I've actively disliked so far. I didn't really dislike it, but it's definitely not. It's not what you picture when you're looking for a bitter amaro. You know, that's just not. But Fair. we are finally, almost done with this. So we are going to go for our last panel, and then we're going to take the four that we like the best, do one last panel because we hate our bodies, um, and then we are going to go to bed and come back next week and make ourselves some boulevardiers. So just stand by. Back. We are. Oh boy, time to drink more. Okay, we are back for our uh, fourth and uh, not really final, but almost final panel. Uh, this, this is our final panel of new things. Uh, we're going to go back and do one more and taste the four that we picked. Um, but let's not stand on ceremony. Sure. Stand on anything else. Stand on bitterness. That's what I do psychologically, morally, everything. It's a good philosophy. Ooh, that is really good. Okay, this is the first one. This is the first one that I literally think just tastes like Campari. Um, maybe just slightly milder than Campari, but very, very much like Campari. Yeah. It's got that little bit of spice to it and the bitterness. That is good tasting. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about that. It, it, it tastes like Campari. I might know what that is. Maybe. Spoiler alert, his, one of his favorite ones is uh, Chinar, yeah, and so, I don't know. I could drink Chinar straight. I don't need anything else with it. Wow. 
Wow, night and day. Yeah, um, pretty mild, pretty mild. Um, it's a good taste, but yeah, very mild. Very yeah. Mild. Not much in the way of spice, not much in the way of bitter. This is, again, this is another one of those around the back of the palate bitters. Like, it was just kind of, it's there. It's nice, it's not amazing, it's it's there. And it's doing its job. I'll um, bet it's got legs. But it's not over one. Well, the problem with trying to find legs and something like this is it might just be sugar. Yeah. Not particularly notable. Again, uh, it's it's good. I, I don't think that would make a bad Boulevardier. Uh, I clearly don't think it would make this the best bowl of <laughs> yeah. but uh, it's good. I just, uh, yeah, I don't think I would put it. In. The thing that's funny is I didn't taste Fernet yet, and clearly I've had it, because Fernet you can taste, I mean, Fernet is dark. Fernet is very dark, so clearly neither one of these is Fernet. I mean, unless Fernet looks way different than I think it looks. Um, and I thought that I would spot Fernet from a mile out. I bet I, I think we might have picked it last time. We'll see. You are no. Is actually really close to the color of Kimbo. Again, super mild. This is maybe even milder than the last one. No, there's bitterness there on the on the very back of the pot. There's bitterness. Um, It's it's a little underwhelming. It's not, again not bad. There's aftertaste. I don't even know if I'd go with bitterness. I mean, there's aftertaste. Well, I think there's I think there's bitterness there. It's 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 not really. Yeah, it's strong. not bad tasting. Um, if you were to ask me, is that an amaro? I don't think I would say yes. No, I get that sort of that bitterness through front of the back of the palate. I'm getting that, but it is definitely not what I would call overpowering. Um, not bad. But uh, in this case, I think number one is definitely where uh, my number one. All right. So our final uh, new new uh, Amaro before we move on to our tiebreaker round where we look at the, the last four we tested. All right. And let's give it a try. A lot of flavor in that one. Yeah, that's, that's a big flavor. Um, the one thing that's interesting about this, the bitterness here is a little more front of the palate. Um, you know, I'm getting a little bit of mint on that one too, actually. You know, what's weird is you got like when you're doing like a bourbon thing, you can say, "Oh, I taste like butter," and I taste like that. This is the first one that I tasted that has that kind of like I can picture banana bread in there, or like, like hmm. bread and butter, egg, and, and baking spices. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, I, I like that one a lot. I think, I mean, for me, it's number one on this one. Yeah. And I don't think it's all that close. Yeah. Uh, if it was to be close, it would be closer to this one. Right, than the other two. Um, that actually does have a, a pretty significant amount of bitterness on it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's quite a bit of taste. I don't think anybody, if you're into bitterness and into it tomorrow, I don't think you'd be disappointed. No, one. no, I don't think so. I think that, that's pretty good. But, so we are picking number one. We're going to go away and splash some water on our faces and come back and uh, just rinse our mouths with some asbestos to get the palate as a palate cleanser. Uh, and then we're going to take the final four that we picked and see which one, which two. Um, we're, so we're going to pick two of these last two and that, those are the two that we will use to make our Boulevardier next week. So leave, light the place up. Yes. All right, we're back. This is a, the, the last of the bitter that we'll be drinking tonight. And I just want to say on behalf of my colleague, thank fucking God. <laughs> yes, it's um, bed. So these are all ones that we've tasted in our prior tastings tonight. And we're just gonna go and pick the two. Uh, normally we only pick one, this time we're gonna pick two because I wanna do uh, three Boulevardiers next week. So, got the good glasses. Shall we? Designed for sniffing, which I can't do anyways. I prefer to call it odorizing. That's not a word. Of course you do. Ooh. Okay, this is that first one. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, God. Talk about a big flavor. Yeah. Very big flavor. Um, some might say the biggest. Uh, yeah. It just tastes like an Amaro. It tastes like an Amaro should taste. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately, I'm, I'm not spending as much time talking about the flavors. We kind of already talked about what we thought the flavors were. So this is going to be more, a little more comparative. Um, so I'm moving on to number two. Okay, this is for Nat. I'm an idiot. This is for Nat. Good bitterness. Yeah, that's that's for. I can't believe I didn't say this was for Nat before. That's definitely for Nat. Good bitterness. Less of an explosion than that first one. I don't know. This is tough. This is tough for me. Um, that's a that's a really big. These are both very very large flavors. There is a lot going on. Um, I get more mint in this one. Um, it's funny. Typically in Fernet, I've tasted cola. I'm not getting cola this time. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Of cola. Anyway. Oh man, I like that version. God. So one of the things you'll notice in people that drink scotch, you know, especially professional scotch tasters will tell you this, that sometimes uh, water has a tendency to open things up. So I tasted a little bit of mint on that one when I first tasted it. But then when I took a sip of water afterwards, I felt like I just had mint leaves in my mouth. But moving on. That's almost smooth compared to those first two. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's very, very tasty. I mean, the thing about making an Amaro, you're using a lot of herbs and a lot of different things to, to sort of put together that flavor profile. So these are all going to be fairly complex. Well, let me put it this way. A good Amaro should be fairly complex in its flavor profile. Uh, and I think this one is. This is milder. Um, now, don't, that, don't take that to mean that it is mild. It is mild in comparison to these two yeah, that, first day, yeah. that are like sipping a truck. <laughs> uh, they, are, they are very, very large flavors that, that very much try to take over. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go with our last one. And I honestly don't know which one I'm going with yet. Or two, sorry, two. Which two I'm going with yet. Okay. This is that that rolling bitter. <laughs> it feels like it feels like you put a big tank of bitter at the front of your mouth and it just kind of rolls backwards. And it kind of spreads the bitterness as it goes. Um, it's a light one. I didn't expect a I didn't expect a light one to be I think you sort of when you when you think of Amaro, you think of dark colors. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I do I like that. I like all these. I like all these. You know, um, you were saying because at this point, we know we like these four. Now we're comparing what we think should be in a Boulevardia. And for me, that criteria counts number four out. I don't know if I agree with that. I'm going to go back through one more time. Um, And I'm not going to go back to these too much more because the problem with tastings like this, if we go through these too much more, everything is just going to taste the same. Um, just because, you know, th these are very, very big flavors. They're flavors that stick around in your mouth for a long time afterwards. And if you do too much sampling, you're just going to get to a point where everything has sort of combined into one kind of mass bitterness. I think I would probably rule out two, um, because the more, again, I'm sorry that I know that that's for Nat, but I do. I, I know the, the flavor profile of it. Uh, and that mint, I don't think that that would go well in that cocktail. I think for me, it comes down to one and three. Let me go. 
do with these again. I can I can go with that. I can go with that. I think four would make a really good Boulevardier, but uh, in the interest of uh, of uh, um, uh, uh, being together and 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 uh, yeah, I'm fine. I, I mean, honestly, I'm probably happy with any of these. The Fernet I think is just I don't think it quite does it. But we are going to go away for a moment. We're going to come right back and reveal. So you already know what all these are. So I'm not going to go through the full reveal process, but I am going to reveal. Of these four, and we could rank. Well, I don't even think we're really in the rank. We, we picked one, we're gonna do one and three. Yeah, um, and any rank we would give would only diminish two and four, which are good, right? They're they're just not gonna win tonight, but they are good, so stay right there. Okay, we are back when we are revealing. So, we're gonna start off with the two we didn't pick, and I was dead off when I said, My lord, my lord actually made it to our little final. So, Chicago, there you go, there you, you go. Won. Maybe um, we'll be the new sponsors. And, uh, well, you know, we'll see. <laughs> uh, Fernet was Fernet. Uh, I'm amazed I didn't taste that right off the bat. Uh, call me crazy. Uh, the other two are interesting, if not that surprising, given uh, the preferences of some of the people that are up here. Number one was Chinar 70. Uh, I didn't have regular Chinar, I just had the 70, but I think that I mean, the flavor profile is the same. It's just a difference in alcohol content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And I think this gentleman has, has sampled this perhaps once before. More than once. I, I I came as close as I ever do to being able to tell by taste what it was. And it's, it's one of the darkest ones up here, so it all kind of added to it. But there's a reason why it's one of my favorites. It's so good. And finally, and I was glad we had one that I, I didn't know particularly well in here, and that is uh, Ramazzotti, I'm assuming. My pronunciation is terrible. Uh, Ramazzotti Amaro. Uh, this is a product of Italy, not surprisingly enough. Um, and so we are going in, I believe, both of these. This is Italian as well, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so not particularly surprising. We are going to go into the Boulevardier with three Amaros that come from Italy because, you know, that's what they do. Um, so... Uh, that's all for tonight, but uh, come back next week and we are going to make ourselves three Boulevardiers with our three tomorrows and see which one you like the best. The other one being the Campari that normally goes in. Absolutely. And on that bombshell, I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a good drink. And have a day. Where are you going? <laughs>